We are also streaming live on YouTube at the Team 980. And uh, if if you're watching there, you see that I'm wearing a polo, which means you know today's a serious show. Yeah, I've got a collared shirt on and everything. Um, this is a insane day to do a sports talk radio show. And there is an impossible number of things that we are going to try to tackle today because the the day's news that the commanders or sorry that the capitals and the wizards are moving in all likelihood it is not a done deal yet to virginia um to potomac yards in 2028 is stunning um but on top of its sheer stunningness if you will it is also as intersectional as anything that I can remember covering since, certainly since we started this show. Um, certainly the commander's sale was complicated in a number of ways, and there was a lot of different factors at play. And we did get into congressional investigations in different jurisdictions and, um, and it talks about power and abuse and um, you know money and, and finances and all of these different things. But at the end of the day, that was still in many ways a story of good versus evil. Snyder gone, um, you know, Harris in, he's the hero. Um, there's other heroes in that story who, who stepped up and, and fought Snyder to, to force his ouster, all of that stuff. And, and there's still like those main characters at play. Here, we're talking about macroeconomics, microeconomics. We're talking about societal impacts of, of sports teams. We're talking about economic impacts of sports teams. Um, and, and I've spent so much of today talking to people, uh, many of the conversations that you'll hear, uh, and, and also like just background from different folks, um, and, and also doing my own research, uh, which somehow has become a scary term, but like actually doing journalistic research, um, reading everything from old Washington Post stories. I read the story from the day that the MCI Center, as it was called at the time, opened in the early 2000s. Reading it um, feels like reading an old-timey newspaper article, even though it was the early 2000s, just the way it's written. Um, you know, the chronicling of things compared to so much of what written journalism is now and so much of what we read now is. But just a true play-by-play -play of the day's events um, was pretty remarkable to read and to hear some of the things and the way it was described and what Abe Poland did at the time. So I've read that. I've read economics. Um, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I read entire studies, but I read you know a lot of synopsis of economic studies today, um, talking about everything from stadium impacts to uh, our stadium impacts on local economies to some stuff that I want to talk about in the bigger economic picture uh, in terms of CEO pay to median employee pay, the way that the richer have gotten rich and the way that impacts this story and Ted Leonsis specifically. But I think to on a sports radio show to start anywhere but the soul of this story is to mistake my job here as a sports talk radio host and, and also the thing that most of you listening care about the most, which is today, Ted Leonsis announced he's taking the soul of the city and putting it in Virginia. And while I think that there is some overreaction on certain elements of this story in terms of like, it's not like he moved them to Richmond. It's not like he even moved them back to Baltimore. And I say back uh, just because it is worth reminding that this team, the bullets uh, turned wizards. Um, and I know the caps are a part of this too. And I'll explain why I'm focused so much on the wizards in a second. Um, but that this team originally was from Baltimore and then obviously moved to the Capitol center and then on into DC uh, in the MCI Center um, when it did. Uh, and actually, sorry, I said early 2000s. It was late 90s um, when that happened. Obviously, Leonsis buys the, them from Poland about a decade later. Um, but you're, you're talking about a move of a couple of miles, a couple of metro stops. By the way, it's on the same line. Um, you know, the yellow line passes through Gallery Place. So, you know, for some of you who commute from suburban Maryland, to go to Capital One Arena, you'll still go to Capital One Arena, which does feel like rubbing some dirt in it. Um, you'll transfer to the yellow line, and then you'll you'll go to Potomac Yards. It's an extra 15, 20 minutes. It's annoying as hell, but, like, okay, is what it is. Um, it's not like he's moving them out of state. 
It's not like he's taking them away. They'll still be called the Washington Wizards, a name most of you hate anyway. Um, But at the same time, I think Mike Wilbon captured this in pure raw anger yesterday on PTI when he got seemingly passed a note at the end of the show when he talked about basketball being a city game. Like, basketball is a game that has thrived in American cities, specifically cities. Of course, you know, it's played in suburbs. It's played on where there's, there's playgrounds everywhere in the country. But in so many ways, the soul, the culture of basketball is a city game. And few cities have the basketball history of this one, of D.C. And I think because of that, the Wizards have smartly, and to their credit, leaned into that, especially over the last five, six years, but even beyond that. I mean, they're literally unveiling a piece, a, a, a court in a couple of nights, two nights from now, in fact, December 15th, that is steeped in a part of D.C. history that most of us didn't know about. A lot of people still don't care about, but it, to the very least, like most of us who lived in the district didn't even know about these boundary stones. Like they got so deep into D.C. that they're talking about boundary stones. On a much simpler level, they wear their city edition jerseys that say the district on them. And I don't think I have to be coy about this. And like, this is going to be a show for adults. I don't mean to say that in a patronizing way, but like, we're going to talk about some heady, heavy stuff today. We have a guest coming up at five o'clock who's a world renowned economist. Like, this isn't your average sports talk radio topic, and thus, this will not be your average sports talk radio show. But like, there is a racial element to this as well. DC is Chocolate City. DC has historically been a black city. And the fan base and the player base in the NBA is obviously heavily skewed black as well compared to every other sport. And to rip that from the district has to be talked about. And this is why also, like, we just accept the fact that the Capitals and the Wizards are a package deal here. And I think this move is actually great for the Caps. I think the the fan base is larger in Virginia. Um, You know, obviously, hockey is a more suburban sport in terms of who is playing it. I need to tell you that hockey skews the other way racially uh, and the way the the, uh, demographics of the suburbs skew, and especially the Virginia suburbs. Um, There's also some terrific, like, youth hockey clubs, many of which the Capitals have helped build uh, build it since they moved their practice headquarters to Northern Virginia. So there's, like, there's a great synergy there. We just accept the fact that it's okay to like move these teams together because one guy owns them. It doesn't have to be that way. Most teams or most cities don't have people that own two teams and just move them around all they want. Like the basketball arena and the, and the hockey arena sharing, like that's not terribly uncommon. In fact, I would say it's probably fairly common. Not always under the same owner, although there are plenty of other setups like this. But this shows the problem with one dude owning so much of the thing that millions of people care about. This is a great business deal for Ted Leonsis. That shouldn't be a reason to move a team like the Washington Wizards. And I think we need to be able to hold those thoughts in our heads together critically. And I've listened to some of my colleagues today talk about, oh, Ted's this, Ted's that. I don't give a rip about Ted Leonsis. I care about you. I care about me, frankly. Not as a journalist, but as a sports fan. But I care much more as someone who has this job as a journalist about you. I care about the listener who is, my listener is, is their fan. That is inherent in what I do as a sports talk radio host. And I know that the people who care about the Washington Wizards the most, those that today are going to wear their Washington Bullets gear, like my dear friend Clinton Yates, who will join us at 5.30 today, are crushed And they should be. Those are valid feelings. And for a city game to be ripped from the city like this is wrong. It's just wrong. And I don't care if it's good business. You don't get to own a sports team to just be in business. Now, luckily, I think this is a good thing. Sports teams have gotten to the point where most of them make money. And frankly, this is another thing on the Caps versus Wizards, not to pit them against each other, but like this is a part of the discussion. The Wizards matter way more than the Caps because the Wizards make the money. The NBA makes money hand over fist in a way the NHL does not. 
And so if we're talking about which team gets prioritized, I'm sorry, Caps fans. I'm sorry, Alex Ovechkin. I'm sorry, everyone, this is going to upset. But the Wizards are more important. If you want to be a businessman. And I don't think this is good for the Wizards. Not spiritually, at least. Maybe it's good economic and like economically, sure. And I think there's also a fact uh, that needs to be said that if the Wizards hadn't been mostly irrelevant for the last 40 years, the economics would look very different. Moving the Warriors out of Oakland was hard for those owners, and they felt I think there was some like genuine oh crapness about it. Now they moved to a different city in the Bay Area. They still kept it uh, urban. They just went San Francisco instead of Oakland. But like part of the reason that was so tenuous is because the Warriors suddenly were awesome. But unlike even the Wizards, the Warriors had a great fan support in Oakland for 40 years. Oracle was rocking when the Warriors stunk. Cap One's a dud. I go to a lot of Wizards games. Ain't a lot of people there, at least to see the home team. Fill up when the Knicks are in town. It fills up when the Bucks are in town. People want to see Giannis. Be LeBron fans there when LeBron's in town. The numbers would look different. All of this would be different if Leonsis didn't mismanage the team for the entire 25 years he's been here. And so there's a lot of factors at play. And I'm just, frankly, I'm just getting started. Because at the end of the day, if you leave over $600 million when you just made millions upon millions, like a couple hundred million of dollars, because you were willing to go into business with the Qataris, you were the first NBA owner to say, oh, we can do business with sovereign wealth funds now? Sweet. Hey, Qatari government, it's Qatari sovereign wealth fund who just killed five to 7,000 people building stadiums for a World Cup you had no business hosting and bribed FIFA for away from the U.S., by the way. We'll go into business with you. And then you're going to leave D.C. over $600 million? That doesn't sit right with me. Straight up. So, yeah, are there economic reasons why Ted Leonsis did this? Sure. Is this, quote-unquote, a good business deal? Yeah, I, I give him that credit. But if you're in sports ownership to do business deals, you don't belong in sports ownership. And that is just where I sit as a sports fan who is frankly sick and tired of seeing rich people ruin things that I really enjoy that should be shared by all of us. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.